Uh, good evening, gentlemen. It is uh, October the 18th. Um, this is my, hopefully, daily update on the progress of this D&D &D thing, because I'm running out of time, and I need to get my ass in gear, and uh, doing this every day, it's an update thing, I mean, may keep my ass in gear, I don't know. So, anyway, uh, yesterday we defined the data structures and wrote most of the code, the loader anyway, for um, this new dungeon file format. And um, that uh, I didn't get done with that completely, but um, I finished that. Uh, I finished that today. Um, I've got loaders. I've got code to um, switch between uh, disk and host byte order, so it'll work right on big Indian systems. Um, most of the stuff I'm planning on targeting is little Indian, but I think uh, uh, Solaris is big Indian, I think, and uh, the Motorola 68K is definitely big Indian. And Power PC is a weird Indian, um, but that probably doesn't matter in this case. And um, uh, it's probably something else. I think the, the PDP-11 is little Indian, isn't it? I can't remember. Anyway, um, right, so, uh, got all the dungeon, uh, dungeon data file, um, uh, functions to deal with stuff here, and I've got, um, I've got some defines, um, in here to, uh, make it a little more featureful as far as, like, error checking and conversion older, uh, converting older, um, uh, data formats as we add stuff to the dungeon format, um, uh, to, to the most latest thing, if it's running on a larger system, but if it's like running on an 8-bit or something, we'll just require that it always use um, up-to-date data files, so that way we can, like, develop and edit on, you know, the big Linux box, and then it will should, when we get to there, still compile uh, on the Z80 CPM machines and run and all that fun shit um, like it's supposed to. So, uh, there's that. Um, what else do we have here? Um, that's an, that's an old file that I backed up. You don't want to look at that. Um, we're supporting it. We've got all of the special features defined. Um, the, uh, the dungeon, um, data structure, uh, has been simplified a good bit from what we were farting around with before. This redesign thing, I decided not to use a jump table and all that bullshit, at least not yet. Um, it just makes things more complicated, and we got to get something going by the end of the month. Ah. Um, so that's all working right. Uh, the walls are defined. What else have we got here? Yeah, there's where we defined that. I had a really dumb error. I had all of my type defs backwards, like it was uh, type diffing, like the sign of types is unsigned and vice versa, and I farted around a long time trying to figure out what was wrong, and it was just dumbass me doing dumbass things like I'm prone to do. Um, so anyway, once I got all this done, I uh, modified some of those shitty G Java decoders that I read some time ago. Um, well, I modified one of them to extract um, uh, the maps. I wanted to, it was, it's not the Squire's Hole. The Squire's Hole is the same as Telengard in Unit, Unix D&D, but the Crestwood Dungeon is the one that's only three levels deep. I wanted to get it along with um, the five classic dungeons because I think that um, that three level Crestwood dungeon from Unix D&D will make a very good like um, level one introduction dungeon thing. I'll make, I'll add things to it and make it into like a little tutorial story dungeon thing. Um, and then the other five dungeons will be, like, the actual real, like, hardcore dungeons, right? So that'll be cool. Uh, maybe. Um, and so, uh, I got it, uh, what, what was I talking about? Right, so, um, I made the, the Java decoder just dump these into the old, like, um, 8 bits per, uh, dungeon location PC d, &D format because it's the easiest one to deal with, and Java doesn't have unsigned integers, which makes uh, certain things with this a little bit funky-woo. 
Uh, so then I wrote the conver uh, converter from that, because I mean it took like two minutes to like change that to like dump all that stuff, right? So that was no big deal. So it generated um, a bunch of uh, where did I put them? a bunch of files for all of the uh, classic dungeons, um, one per level. So uh, since we're not since we're switching it to do that, that'll make it a little more workable on 8-bit systems like we, with only 64k like we talked about before. So um, then this C code that I just kind of hacked into my main function just to get her done, um, it was a big test here, it just loads that and then um, blaps that stuff into an empty dungeon uh, structure and then uh, saves it to disk. And if I can select the correct screen here. I hope you can see that. I hope OBS isn't being a dick. Um, that is a uh, printout of the, uh, the uh, nibbles that represent the west and north walls respectively um, uh, for each dungeon location uh, on the first level of Telenguard. And just a quick heck to see what's going on. But we can see um, it's a uh, get this up here where we can see it. I, I think you can see the pointer right here. I don't know. We can see down here, this is the, um, this is where the, uh, uh, road number 14, that's where the entrance to level one is, and you can see there's no wall there, and there is a secret door, uh, right next to it here that leads into that dragon slayer, and, um, and there's the secret door down here where it's uh, no, that's a that's just a regular door duh, 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 into these little rooms down here. Um, you remember the rooms down there, and there's a throne over here in one of them, and then a fountain in the next one over, I think maybe. Um, so that uh, appears to indicate that um, things are working like they are supposed to so far. Um, so that's good, and I haven't, um, I, I don't have it putting the special features into the dungeon structure yet because that's slightly more complicated and it is almost my bedtime because I have to get up at 5.30 in the morning. So I'll finish this tomorrow, I think. Okay, I hope that all recorded right. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.